how to read and write the data from our structures into a JSON that is formatted the same way as the data table and that by using C++ in Unreal. Actually, I need to give more information. If you already generated a JSON using C++ in Unreal and also a JSON exported from a data table, you probably noticed that both files are completely different. And that is because in the JSON exported from the data table, there's multiple copies of the structures inside it compared to the original JSON. Because for each of the rows in the data table, there's a structure associated to it. So if you have 10 rows, you have 10 structures, which gives in the end a file that is completely different. And that's why to Today, we're going to create a few functions letting us read and write that new file format. So let's get to it. But before getting started, today's video is going to reuse some code that we wrote in the videos 1, 2, and 4 of the series, so I recommend to go back and see them uh, if you didn't already. But in the case that you don't want to, this is how the code looks like. So for the header file, it's going to be very simple. We just need two functions, one to read the JSON file and one to write the JSON file. But we're also going to reuse the same structure we used before. So the FAQ test struct right here. So I'm just going to forward include it right here at the top. And then we can create the function that reads the JSON file. As input, it's super simple. It just needs to know what is the file path of the file you want to read. And as output, it's going to return you a mapping, a mapping of a string to the structure, because if you remember in the data table, there's multiple rows. So in the JSON, there's also going to have multiple rows with different name. So the string right here is the name of the row and the structure is, well, the structure. Meaning that this map is going to contain as many elements as you have rows in your JSON. And then for the function that writes the data to a JSON file, it's pretty much the same thing. You just have to feed it the file path of the file you want to write, and then the mapping containing all the rows and the structures you want to write into the file. And obviously this function is going to generate a JSON file that is formatted the exact same way as if you were to export a data table directly from Unreal. Perfect, now it's time to go in the CPP. So here I already included all the header files from the previous videos we're going to reuse, and we also need a new include, which is the data table.h, and that one is inside the engine module, which you should already have by default inside your build.cs file. And now to read the data from the file, how are we going to do that? Well, we're first going to read the string from the file. So we're going to extract everything from the file into a string. Then from that string, we're going to create a data table and populate it. So it's going to generate a big data table containing all the information that is coming from the string and organize it properly so we can parse it super easily. And then we're going to loop through all those rows that are in the data table we're going to create and generate the mapping we want to return at the end of the function. So let's do that. First step is to read the string from the file, and that's what I'm going to do right there using the read string from file function we created in the previous video, feeding it the file path, and that's going to give us the string of the whole content of the file. If that was not a success, well, I can simply return an empty mapping because we failed to read the file, so it's not going to generate any valid data anyway. Then we're going to take that string and put it into a data table. So let's create a data table uh, real quick right here. New object data table. We have to specify which structure it should use to organize its data. And once that's done, we can simply tell it, okay, populate your data using the JSON string we just loaded from the file. And that's going to give us a big data table containing everything properly organized in nice rows. Rows that we then can go through one by one and extract the data from them. So let's do that. I'm going to get all the rows from the data table right here. Then I'm going to create my mapping that I'm going to return at the end of the function. So this is the data that we're going to populate using the data that is contained inside the data table. Then we can loop through all the rows that are in the data table, extract the content of the row right here using a find row using the name of the row. That's going to give us a pointer to the row and the content that is inside it. I'm just going to check if the row is valid. And if it is, then we can simply add it into the rows to struct right here using the row name as a key and the row content as value. And that's it. Once we're done looping through all the rows, it's going to generate us a nice mapping containing all the data we need to return at the end of the function right here. And now for the function that writes the JSON, uh, it's even simpler because we simply have to populate the data table uh, the same way we did right here, and then ask uh, one of the previous functions we created to export it into a file. 
So super simple, we're going to take the mapping we receive as input right here and extract all the rows that are inside it. So we have all the rows and then we're going to create a data table because we're going to populate it using all those rows. So I'm going to create my data table right here. I'm telling it to use the same structure as the structure we receive as input, obviously. And then we can simply loop through all the rows that we extracted from the mapping and add them one by one into the data table. Now we have a nice data table containing all the data we want to write into the file and we simply have to do the export data table to JSON or CSV which is going to export the content of the data table into the file path we receive as input. And that's it, that was super simple and now we can go in Unreal to test all that. So in Unreal to test all that, I'm going to use a JSON file that I have right here that is formatted the same exact way as the data table. I actually use the data table to export this file. So here it is, I have a nice file at the top and I'm going to use this little widget right here that I built. So widget super simple, we just have to tell it the file path of the file we want to read. And then I have three blocks right here that are the three rows I would like to read from the files. You can obviously have as many rows as you want, but in my case, since I wanted to be lazy a little bit, I just limited myself to three rows just like that and finally I have two buttons at the bottom one to read and one to write the JSON file now if I go in the graph to show you the code it looks a little bit complicated but it's not that bad actually if I click on the button that reads the JSON file I'm just taking the path of the file and then feeding it into the read struct from JSON file right here then at the end of that function I'm getting the data contained in the JSON I'm just going to loop through all of it and populate all my different rows inside my user interface so they have the same exact data that we have in the JSON file and then I'm simply doing the opposite when we click on the button to write the file so I'm taking all the data that is inside my user interface I'm building a mapping using that data and feeding it into the write struct to JSON file uh, that function that we just created using also the same file path perfect now let's go see how it looks if it works actually so I'm going to run that right here here I have my user interface and the first thing I'm going to do is to read the JSON file and it seemed to work all the data now seem to match the data that is inside the JSON. So first row llama true blah blah blah. Then I have a second row peanut, second row peanut, and finally at the end I have third row and nothing written. That's good. It seems to work. Now what I can do is modify these values right here. So two to two, I can modify the row names also. It's not an issue. I can change the boolean. I can change everything and click on write. And after a few seconds, it should up. Day, doo -doo -doo, here we go, it updated. Now the JSON has the same information that I had in my user interface. So I have my first row lemma still, I didn't change those. I changed the float and the end so we can see that it worked. Then I have my second row name that is now a big mess, the same thing as for the string. And now I have a different float and for the third row, it seems pretty all right too. So yeah, it seems to work properly and that's gonna be it for today's video. So I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye bye.